In this tutorial, there are some harder concepts relating EMF and potential difference to energy changes with applications in real circuits and then showing how those relate to a basic law, Kirchhoff's second law. I aim to explain internal resistance in practical ways as well as in theory from measurements using dry cells but showing how the internal resistance of any supply can be calculated. Let's start with EMF and potential difference. First of all, let's just check through the relationship between potential difference, current and charge. Voltage or potential difference is all about the energy provided by the electricity. Electric current measured in amperes is about the rate of flow of electricity. So if a current of one amp is flowing, then one coulomb of electricity is flowing through every part of the circuit every second. So in this circuit, where the current is 0.3 amps, it's fairly obviously 0.3 coulombs passing through every part of the circuit every second. The potential difference, as being measured here by the grey meter, is the difference in energy level between one side of a component and the other, the change in the energy level. The potential difference measures how much energy in joules is converted to heat or light by each coulomb that goes through. A potential difference of 1 volt shows that each coulomb is providing 1 joule of energy, changing 1 joule of energy to heat and light. I've set up 4 cells and 2 bulbs in an incomplete circuit. You can see the gap between the two bulbs. I'm using a voltmeter to measure across each pair of cells. Across the first, that is 3.3 volts, and moving to the second pair, also 3.3 volts. Measuring across the combination, we'd expect, and indeed we get, 6.6 .6 volts. In each of these measurements, the only work the cells are doing are pushing this minute current through the voltmeter to make it operate. We're measuring its maximum energy output per coulomb. Hence, here, we're measuring the EMF. So the total EMF for these four cells is 6.6 .6 volts. Now we complete the circuit, in this case by putting in an ammeter, that is the yellow meter on the right. I'm not too bothered about what the current measurement is on the ammeter. We're concentrating on the measurements we're going to take on the voltmeter. We're measuring the potential difference, or the energy per coulomb, across each bulb. That's 2.41 volts over the first bulb, and the second, 2.83 volts. Adding these to the circuit diagram, we'd expect the total of the two to be 5.24 volts. And indeed, that's what it is. So a total of 5.24 volts across the external components, that's the bulbs of this circuit, means that there are 5.24 joules being converted for every coulomb that passes. We have to explain why that's not 6.6 .6 volts. And the explanation is in the fact that the ammeter completed the circuit. It didn't have to be an ammeter. Any connector would have done. But the key is that the current is now flowing around the circuit and flowing through the cells. Those cells contain a mix, a paste of chemicals, which produce the electricity, but they themselves have a resistance. This is called the internal resistance. So some of the energy, that is some of the EMF, is used inside the cell. We can tell that happens because if we feel the cell after it's been used for a while, it's getting hot. From this, we can move to Kirchhoff's law. In formulating his law, Kirchhoff realised this must be the case. So what he said was that in a closed circuit, the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the potential differences. This is really just a restatement of the law of conservation of energy, especially for electric circuits. That states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Remember that the EMF is a measure of how much energy in joules is provided to each coulomb. 
that same amount of energy must be given out, must be provided or converted into other forms of energy, heat and light in this circuit, as was put in. But that includes heat in the battery. So just to push the point home and restating it slightly differently, the potential difference across the bulbs was 5.24 volts, but the EMF of the cells was 6.6 .6 volts. So 6.6 .6 joules of energy were provided to each coulomb of electricity. Only 5.24 joules of energy were converted to heat and light in the bulbs, so 1.36 joules of energy were converted to heat in the cells. So finally, a statement of Kirchhoff's second law, which is a version of the universal law of conservation of energy. In a closed circuit, the sum of the EMFs, which is about the total energy that the source produces, is equal to the sum of the potential differences around the circuit, which is about the total energy which is used up, and these are equal. Finally, a bit more detail about what internal resistance is and how it can be measured. Up to now we've been using dry cells and if I cut one in two rather laboriously we can see what is inside. Splitting it open you can see that there is a mess of chemicals. Now this mess of chemicals is part of the circuit when the cell is in a circuit, all of the electricity flows through this. And this mess of chemicals has got a significant resistance. It's not just dry cells that have a resistance. A generator has a coil of wire turning in a magnetic field. And large generators have very large coils of wire. And these also have a resistance, an internal resistance to the generator. Within most machines, a transformer is the source of electrical energy. And the transformer, again, has large coils of wire which have a resistance. Returning to dry cells, which are safer and rather easier to use. This is a series circuit set up with an ammeter to measure the current around the circuit, a single bulb, and a battery of four cells. The voltage across the cells is measured by the voltmeter you can see now. This measurement is of the EMF of the cells because the circuit is switched off and the cells are doing no work. The only thing they're doing is the minute current required to drive the voltmeter. So this is the circuit, switch open, and 6.16 volts being read and that is the EMF of the battery of all of the four cells. So we've got this measuring the EMF 6.16 volts. We switch on the bulb lights of course and a current flows around about 0.23 amps. We'll wait till it settles down about 5.38 perhaps 5.37 volts 0.23 amps. So returning to the circuit diagram, remember the EMF is 6.16 volts, the bulb lights and the current 0.23 amps, the new potential difference across the cells 5.37 volts. Now remember that voltage measures the energy per coulomb and somehow we seem to have lost this 0.79 volts, the difference between 6.16 and 5.37. That 0.79 volts is the potential difference required to drive the current through the cells itself, through the chemicals within the cells. And this is because they constitute an internal resistance. The current has to be driven through those. And you can tell that there is an energy change taking place because if you feel the cells as they're being used, they get warm. So the electrical energy is changing to heat in the cells. Because we know the current that's flowing through the cells, it's the same all around the circuit, and the potential difference within, we can calculate the resistance. The resistance is V over I. So the internal resistance is the voltage within, that's 0.79 volts, divided by the current. The same current flows all the way around the circuit, that's 0.23 amps. 
and the result of that division is 3.43 ohms. So this 3.43 ohms is the resistance of the chemicals, the internal resistance within the cells. And this same sort of calculation would apply to any other supply, that is, a transformer or a generator. Thank you for watching.